We finally got a another young business owner in this man crazy world. Alejandra is in the house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for everybody tuning in, the ones that don't know you, what's your your brand name, your proud brand name? So my name is Alejandra, and I'm the owner of Truly Snatched Body Contouring. Jeez. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but I want to say thank you for letting me be on. This no, is, thank you for, man, I know it's kind of a last minute thing. Yeah, were, I was I was on a flight back home from Cancun. <laughs> and then Cindy sent me, uh, well, you know, you messaged me. I did. And, and then it was so funny because you were like, hey, are you available on Sunday? And I'm like, who is talking? Like, what is, what is this? And then Cindy texted me, and I'm like, oh, okay. So, like, I put two and two together, and I was like, oh, okay. She's like, yeah, you should come do this podcast. Yeah, I'm sometimes like, my DMs uh, don't go the way I feel like they're portraying. It's because so. you're excited. You're excited about your podcast. It, you you're know, excited to get people. It's so, so. it's like, it's weird when I, and I tell people, like, I, I have to send DMs, and when I'm sending them, I'm just like, hey, uh, my name is Luis. This is a podcast. Can yeah. you be on it? But she, as soon as I already had messaged you, Cindy sent me your page. She's like, dude, I think you should get her on. Aww. I was like, hey, I already sent the message, but can you do it, please? So, <laughs> well, thank you, Cindy. Yeah, this Cindy, thank you. I know, because of Cindy. <laughs> but how long have you had this, this brand name, this business? So Truly Snatched um, has been around for a year. Uh -huh. I completed my year in September. Um, so what, September, October, December, like a year and three months. Wow. So yeah, about to go on the whole loop of the second year. So, so how's this first year of business? Oh my gosh. It's been amazing and not something that I planned to be in. Like it mm. literally came out of nowhere. So maybe giving like the backstory, yeah, like, how did I get it. here? What is this? First of all, what is body contouring, right? Like, I got no idea. So no time idea to school everybody and myself in this. Well, it is what it sounds like it is. It's body contouring. It's basically, um, the way I like to explain it is more like a, a weight loss type of um, treatment that one can do. So mm. it has different types of techniques, um, cavitation, radio frequency, light bulb laser, what therapy. Now I have this whole other machine called M-Scope. So really it's about body um, and the way it started. So prior to even starting this business, I have no experience. I had no experience in this business. Wow. Um, it kind of just fell into my lap out of nowhere. But prior to doing this, um, I do have a history of um, being a realtor for about two years. Mm. And then um, I did insurance, life insurance and investments for another two years and then, um, but when the pandemic hit, um, it almost felt like I came to this point in my life where, okay, I have to make a decision. Like, am I going to go back to real estate? Am I going to continue in this insurance industry? Or is there something new? Mm -hmm. And I was frustrated because um, I've been switching. Like prior to this, it was like, oh my God, I went from real, I'm going to be you know, I was the realtor. Then I was the insurance girl. I I'm, We also have a family business. It's a daycare facility. Mm. So my parents started that business 16 years. So I worked that business as well. Yeah. So I was like, oh my gosh, here I go again. Like I'm about to hop into something new, I think. And I was really sa like, sad and like, oh my God, I don't want to switch anymore. What are people going to say about me? Yeah. But honestly, I came to the point where I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like mm. it almost felt like I was swimming against the current. Like I could feel the energy of yeah. I'm not supposed to be in this anymore. So then um, I decided to just let go and let God, like let God, um, what do you want to do? Yeah. Where are you going to take me? I'm just going to surrender it. Like I'm done. I don't want to. Um, it's okay. You got to hear all this. Yes. This is, this is some good. 
like, you know, really sorry to cut you off, but no. like finding out how you landed into this and, and what brought you into this whole, you know, you I want to call it a successful business because if you follow her on her social media platforms, you will see there's a new uh, car to the fleet yes. that drives itself and, you know, caring about the ozone layers out here. Yes. <laughs> but I think that's just that's just a verification and proof of your hard work. Yeah. Like, uh, obviously, uh, now that I met you through Sydney, Sydney you, and, you and Sydney work on, on content. Mm -hmm. And you just mentioned it earlier off of camera that you find more satisfaction in teaching people. Yes. So let can let's talk about that. Like, how is that from being and starting your business, and now teaching people about the business? Mm -hmm. What satisfaction? What what is it that I like to teach people um, about getting into your own business or doing your own type of um, whether it's a side business, your main business, or whatever it is. Um, I grew up with my mom having her own business and I always saw mm. her being like um, the one that's leading like the home and and she came here with nothing and built a business that still to this day, even though she's not here anymore in the physical world, it still provides. It provides for me, for my dad and my sister. It's crazy. So I feel like there's nothing better than having your own business. And if I can teach someone from the things that I've learned um, that's what I like to share. Yeah. So thank God, um, the platform I have is not because of what I've done. It's honestly because of what God's put in my life. Mm. Like this is not me. This is him making a way for me. And when you are not scared, um, or you put fear aside, cause I still get scared, but I put fear aside and I decided I'm going to do this. Everything flows. Yeah. And so, um, I know that I'm supposed to be teaching people. Um, mm. and, and motivating people, you know, yeah. but to motivate and to teach people, you can't just do that. You got to go through things, you know? Facts. So I feel like if I can teach people, um, mm. certain things, I'm only teaching them from the things that I've been through. Yeah. You know? Cause you, you can't teach somebody else something that you don't even know. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can look it up, get research and stuff like that. But until you personally have gone through like, certain things yeah. then you can really like hey from what i learned from this this is what i got and this is you know and it's like anything else i can give you the recommendation and the advice yeah if you don't want to take it that's up to you but mm -hmm. you can't say i didn't help you or i didn't try to warn you like our parents like they all tell us of what you shouldn't do and this and that they're just warning us about what they've gone through and what they know is going to happen right. if we continue in this this path right. so um I'm I'm sorry to get a little personal, but you said your mom's not in this world physically. Yeah. How long ago was that? Eight years ago. Wow. It, it was just eight years ago. So I was 17. My mom passed away from breast cancer. Wow. Mm -hmm. She battled it for two years. And then eventually it just overtook her whole body. It, it started as breast cancer and it ended up going through the whole um, body. So how, how was that uh, adaptation to the world for yourself? It was, I mean, I, that, I was in high school. So to me, it was like we just went through this period of two years, like hospital was all we knew. It was just in and out of the hospital, mm -hmm. especially around this time, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, always in the hospital, guaranteed. So, um, I mean, it's crazy to think like it's been eight years that my mom hasn't been here, but I feel like I've, like, it's like she's not here, but, like, I know she is because there's things that I, like, I'm like, how are things, you know, where, why am I where I'm at, you know? But um, it was tough. It was tough, especially being, so the way, the way that started, that when she got diagnosed, it was uh, 2011. Um, I was 15 or about to be 15. No, I was 15. I was 15, and she found out, like, she had stage four breast cancer. You have less than a year to live. It was wow. like that. And then, wow. um, but luckily it, she surpassed that year. And just during that time, it was just really just being home. She beat the odds. There. Yeah, she beat the odds for that moment of time, you know. And yeah. still, she's still working even though she's not here physically. Um, but we have such a strong dad that like, it's like, yes, mom is not here, but it's like, 
he holds up both parts, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So would you say that kind of just gave you the motivation to be where you're at now? Like finding your route or how did... So what is the motivation slash inspiration behind everything that you're doing? Everything that you've gone through since then to now? Yeah. How'd you figure this out? I think I have my mom's spirit. Mm. Like sometimes, sometimes when I'm doing things, like I just feel like sometimes I act like her. Yeah. Or I like do things. Um, I'm pretty, I'm so much, I'm really her twin. Yeah. My dad and my sister are, are their twins. <laughs> Me and my mom are twins. And um, I think just seeing the way like my mom was able to provide and, and work for herself, like I have that same spirit. Like yeah. I've worked for other people and I just don't like people telling me what to where, do. <laughs> so you said earlier, where, did, where else did you work at? Um, so my very first job, I did medical billing at a plastic surgery facility. Mm. So that was like straight out of, well, during high school, my senior year. So yeah. I was what, like 18 maybe? And uh, that was my first job. And, my, and then I was like, I, I'm never coming back to this again. <laughs> I'm like, why am I working for someone when my mom literally built a business at home? My dad's running it. I should go back. Yeah. And then I, I started working the daycare. And, you know, my dad's like, you can, cre you can make the school the way your mom wanted to do it with it. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. But when something is not your calling, it's just not going to happen. Like, I just mm, felt like I yeah. love the daycare. It does what it needs. It sustains us. But that's not what I'm supposed to do in there you know so then after that I was like well what else do I like to do I like interior design okay well I should probably get into real estate because I need money to do interior design <laughs> sure and I just got into it like I didn't even think about it I was like oh, oh you need to get licensed okay let me get licensed I got licensed and I passed and then um my first client came. I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I had really great brokers, and it was funny. I took my client. They're like, we don't want a fixer-upper. I took them to a fixer-upper, and I had to, oh, my gosh, like, okay, I wanted to show you this for a reason to see what it looks like, and then let me take you to the actual home you actually want. So, and then the broker ended up helping me, and I did it, and then insurance came, and then I got into that. I got licensed in it. So, really, the things I've done, I just hop into it, and let's see what happens. So... <laughs> Then the reason I want to ask this is because one of my buddies is actually, uh, he just told me, and he's just like, fuck, I feel like I'm lost. I feel like I need to find something to do. Uh -huh. So you that you went through the jobs, you, you went through your business or your parents, how do you feel like you find your gift or you find your calling? Like, is there something that helped you? Is there something that kind of paved the way to that, to what you're doing now, helping you know, I ask myself that question every day, like, what's my gift? What am I, like, good at? What mm -hmm. is something, you know, that, like, what's my purpose? And I don't think, at least for me, like, I don't think I've, I think I have multiple gifts. And um, it just, if op opportunities just come. And to be honest, um, now, now I start, I just ask God, like, to be really honest, like, I just pray about it. Yeah. And then, um, but I don't think you find your gift, like, wake up one day, okay, this is what I'm talented in. I think you, you put yourself out there in situations and you find out what is you, what is not you. And whatever is not you, don't, um, like, whatever is not you, don't say, oh, no, get rid of it and never going to talk about it again. I think learn a lesson from it to build on it, to then find what is you. And then yeah. I think through that, you find your gift. It may, you know, and I think, I don't think I've found my gift. I think I have little small gems, but mm. I think I'm on my way to purpose. And I think that's the whole point of life is purpose. And that's what I want to find. Wow. Do you feel being 20, 25 years old, right? Mm -hmm. You said, yeah. Do you feel like you have some sort of pressure to figure this out faster? Or sooner? I do. I think because of the culture we live in. I think mm. it's the culture we live in that everything has to be fast where everything is fast nowadays. Correct. Yeah, fuck Like, yeah. now you don't even need to drive your car to go get food. You could just put your in an order on, on post. Own. Well, you could drive your car on your... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we live in a culture that we're so used to everything being so fast. Yeah, You know, like you order your food. Now you don't even, you know, microwave food. Like, you know, so I think um, I feel pressure because of the culture we live in. But I try to remind myself that, like, anything that comes fast is never good. Like, nothing that is fast is good for you. Yeah. Fast food is not good for you. As, as much as it tastes good, it's, it's not good for you. Fuck. 
you know? <laughs> uh, damn. Um, just, you know, even like, for example, working out, like um, I used to be in love with the gym. Now I'm starting to like trying to fall back in love with it again. And um, I've had this realization through working out, like, damn, even working out, like it takes time. It takes, but yeah, during that, about this. think about it, like during that, you're trying to, let's say, build a better stamina, build better muscle. Like you're going to, it takes time one and there's yeah. some pain you're going to go through. Soreness. Fuck yeah. You know? that, that's a, what you just said right now is kind of in the same scenario because right now I'm in the gym and I'm just like, oh, fuck man. Yeah. I'm beat as a motherfucker. But <laughs> it's just how you said, I'm still trying to fall back in love with it. But mm -hmm. I look up, it's because I, I, for me, myself, uh, maybe you relate to it too. I look at how I was three years ago. Yeah. And I was so in love with it. I was so in there. I was, no matter what time it was, yeah. just going through it, not sleeping. It is what it is. To now, I'm just like, how can I be that person again? And realizing, mm. like, all right, I can't be that person once again. Yes. Because we have to go through, like, tiredness, soreness. You know, now my muscles don't recover the way they used to recover yeah. back then. <laughs> but... You know, and this is me and Cindy just talked about this too because, you know, I had one of one of my friends, like, he's a very motivated young guy. I think he's, like, 22, 23. Okay. He was like, ah, dude, like, you know, if we start posting more, then, then, then we can get sponsored and we can do this and that. But to me, myself, and kind of told him, I'm like, ah, like, bro, I'm past that already. Like, I did what I needed to do. I think it did my pur serve my purpose. Um, he said he was going to post and I was like, if you want to get sponsored, like, Hey, you need to do this. Yeah. There's only one way to get noticed and that's putting content. Yeah. Gifted him a, a tripod and not once had he posted. I'm like, <laughs> ah, to, to get noticed, like you got to be out there. You yeah. have to put yourself out there. Yeah. But to my point is this, this guy, he's very young, motivated, but it's how you said what we gone through. We can't. We can only speak on it if we already gone through it. Mm -hmm. And it was that, like, bro, like, I've been here since five years already. Like, mm -hmm. I've gone from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., one day one to day seven, no matter what happened, to now it's just like, I got other focuses. Yeah. Like, my now I'm a big dude on mental health. Mm -hmm. Back then, I fucked that, put it to the side, we're good, nothing happens, everything's good, but leads to my next question mentally how has being a business owner young business owner taken like a toll in, in your life I think in my personal life like the business when I get into business mode like I'm one type of version of me the Alejandra the the business owner things mm -hmm. you got to get done things you gotta to keep the business flowing mm -hmm. and then there's Alejandra you know me you know, my personal life. Yeah. And it's tough. Like having a business is not easy, you know. Because people say these are, these are quote unquote, our prime years. Right. And yeah, we're spending our prime years building something. Right. Instead of, I mean, partying is cool to each, to each their own. But to create something like you do got to sacrifice. You do. So yeah. So have you, have, have you sacrificed? You would yes. say you're great years or your best years for, yeah. for this tomorrow yeah and I don't I I mean I think I like to mix I think everyone's different like what are your pa your favorite past thing pastime things to do mm -hmm. like for me now it's like I, you know I went through a party phase and yeah. like now it's like I can't even really drink anymore like I just don't like it I mean I'll drink and stuff but yeah. and I like to party maybe two times out of the year but for me now it's more like my favorite pastime is like vacations. Like now I'm mm. addicted to like, let's travel. <laughs> I, I heard you're, but, you guys have a traveling coming up. Sometime. Yes. Cindy and I are going to Hawaii at the end of the, uh, the end of January. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, but I have had to sacrifice like, um, I, I feel like with this business, it's still new. I'm still learning. Like, um, how am I, where do I got to sacrifice and everything? But the, the previous business I did, I had to sacrifice literally everything, mm. which was like, I was so used to being with family every single like weekend. Yeah. And because I was uh, hiring agents and they looked up to me to like, I need to be there. I'm the representative. I had to sacrifice family time. Yeah. I had to sacrifice friendship time. And until this point, like a lot of people, 
left my life and they're not in, they're not, they were left in that season and now yeah. I'm in a different season. So I think that's, um, when you are leveling up, when you are going somewhere and, and just because you're leveling up doesn't mean you look at people like you're less than me, you yeah, know, no, for sure. you're just moving, you're moving, your life is moving forward. Um, there's going to be people that are going to be left behind. And to me, I felt like that's what I had to sacrifice was like, I can't be that Ale that is trying to bring everyone together, family together, friends together. And that was a sacrifice that I had to do. So how was that transition with relationships, losing the relationships you had? At the beginning, it was very much so like sad because it's like, why are you leaving me? Like mm -hmm. I've you know, been low like I'm just trying to get ahead in life. Like, yeah. why are you upset with me? But and for me, really, this started happening 2020, like prior to starting this new business. Oh, wow. Yeah. People, it, like my life started s shifting a lot 2020 um wow. as far as like relationships falling off friendship yeah. relationships is it just like people that didn't believe in the vision you had or is this like you knew they weren't there for the right intentions no i think it's we were all we're all going in a different path you know you go from like high school and schools like we're just go to school get off and then we can do whatever we want yeah so going from that shift to like damn we're in the real world now like we're Correct. adults like oh my gosh i think we just all we're all gonna go through that phase you know and but for me at the time i didn't see it like that i saw it more like why are they leaving me? Like, Sucks. you know, but we all have stuff. We all have journeys, purpose we have to go after. And sometimes we can't hang around with the same people all the time. Yeah, for you sure. Know? I think uh, making changes in your life that, you know, have a positive effect yeah. are needed. Yeah. You know, again, and I, I, I keep talking about this group of people that we have here. And it's just like, we all landed in each other's quote unquote labs yeah. without even like knowing what we're going to build Yeah. and talking about the group and just, you know, everybody individually on their own is just, they're so special. Mm -hmm. And I tell everybody and it's we just, like how we just finished talking. You can't duplicate this type of group. Yeah. Like to really find it outside of here, you know, the way we're all going and our purpose, right. you can't duplicate it. And definitely you can how, uh, What's that saying? You can't fake the funk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fake the funk, you know? Yeah. Like, you could tell, you know, maybe you you could tell us a little bit about seeing the right intentions of people. Like, you know, people are there for a reason, and Cindy said it herself, that they're here to teach us a lesson. Yes. Yet, some of us, we're just so, so not used to the change that we just want to keep them, even right. if the intentions are not correct. Right. So was it hard for you to let go of certain situations? I think, yes, it's, it's always hard to let go of certain people that, you know, you love and that you're close to. You yeah. know, it could be friends, relationships, family, whatever it is. Um, it's hard to let go. But I think it's like my, my friend Jackie really helped me with this because she used to train me too. So we would have talks. Hakez? Yes, Hakez, Jackie Hakez. Everybody knows her. <laughs> Shout out Jackie. Well, I knew, I knew Jackie since we were in fifth grade and See? then we finally rekindled. Um, actually, I recruited her into the business and that's how well, we ended up rekindling. I got Aubrey on the podcast and then I was like, oh yeah, I think we should put on Jackie. And like this, I was explaining who she yeah. is. She's like, I know her. I'm Jackie like, is famous. <laughs> she is. She is. She she's a, a life from above for sure. Right. So she she told me. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but she's like, some people are just meant to be with you for a certain season, and then you know you gotta let them go and don't um, don't hold it like a grudge if they walk out of your life, you yeah. know, and kind of see it like you know what, they did teach me something. It sucks, like, damn, why couldn't you come with me to this next level? We were supposed to, like, you know, move in together. We were supposed to uh, be partying together. Like, we're supposed to be traveling Take together. Taking the world together. Taking, yeah, like, whatever it might be, like, you know, but sometimes, like, I've come to learn, like, a lot of people have been falling out of my life, but I've been able to, I've been having space to find me. Mm. what what can I how can I better myself so I think by me it was more like let go and let God like stop being in control of everything you know and yeah. don't get in your way 
to me like yeah. that that's been something that's been like um playing in my mind a lot these past two weeks or so yeah. don't get in your way like if something happens let it happen don't get in your way don't control don't try to go find out like okay well why this why that like just don't get in your way yeah and for just sure. let like, things unfold i think how like that saying goes like uh how you said let go let god and i i tell everybody if you can control the outcome do as whatever you can control it and hopefully get the outcome that you wanted to right. but if the outcome is uncontrollable like it's still gonna happen yeah you gotta you gotta be able to let it go yeah as much as much as it hurts as much as, as much as it sucks or as much as you're trying to avoid it like some things are just meant to happen yeah like uh, I mean, it sounds extreme, but maybe boyfriend or girlfriend were supposed to cheat on you mm -hmm. so you can find yourself after this or right. let go. Of, this is a final straw. Maybe yeah. your job was to f supposed to fire you so you can become an entrepreneur or business owner later yeah. on. And or and those every every time that like something like that happens and then um, an op like the opportunity presents itself where like damn, I don't know what the next step is. I'm scared about it. It's dark in there. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. But I've found that I've I've been in those places. I, you know, I'm 25. I'm sure there's so much more. But I've been through those dark spaces. So one was losing mom. Oh, my God. What is the next? Like, what is my life going to look like? You know, like, are we going to have our house? Are we going to lose the daycare? Are we going to lose... Like there's so Ourselves. many fears. There's so many fears, so but much. I went through that wilderness. I went through that dark and I'm still here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, okay, the daycare is not meant for me. What am I going to get? I'm scared again. I don't know what else is out there. Then the opportunity of real estate presented itself. Okay, cool. Did that. Let's do that. Next thing, insurance. Oh my God, I don't know that. I'm fearful about it. I don't yeah. know anything about that. Went into it learned so much and then boom again mm -hmm. oh my god where am i supposed to go now and i've blossomed something that I, in in the dark and everything that is meant for you is going to be in dark situations yeah you know? i think there there's no age the there's no a, right age to like hey we can talk about this because there's people say they're even 20 years old and they've gone through hell and back Mm. Now, like uh, like that barber, Vic Blends, he's 20, 22, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And his message is beyond what he ever dreamed of. And he says it like, I'm a barber. He was like, but I know my message was supposed to be greater than being a barber. Mm -hmm. So now he's out there giving free haircuts. But he says, the reason I'm doing this is to get the million dollar conversation out. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you stay in this? And what do you really want to do with your life? Mm -hmm. And just like how we're doing here, having the conversation and making it normal to open up about your journey and showing the, the younger generation and even older generation that's listening, listening to this, get inspired. Like, hey, if we're able to do this and we're sitting in this chair, what's stopping you from sitting in that same chair and wherever your, your journey is? Yeah. So I think, you know, again, there's no there's no right time. Right. Everybody has their time. Right. It could be at 18. It could be 15. It could be 20. It could be 30, 40. Everybody has their journey and time. But how I always 70, say 70, 80. I think the biggest story for me is um, the, the KFC guy. Like, I don't know if oh, you know his story. Nah, but not really, but I kind of like. I think um, he, his whole life maybe tried like doing this business of fried chicken and yeah. never happened and it didn't blow up until he was like older and like senior years you know like i don't even know how old but like i don't know 70 80s let's just say yeah and then now he's billionaire now there's franchises everywhere so i think um i think we're always so pressured like you're in your 20s you're supposed to figure it out now so like when you're 30 you're already you know established, you're established established you have your kids you have your house all this but 20s like you need to figure all that out like i don't there is no timing you know like i don't think and that's what i've been like trying to um tell myself like in this culture yeah. um you need to go with your timing not with the timing that other people tell you damn when you hear the words happiness what does that remind you of what comes to mind happiness 
I think happiness is just, for me, it's just being home with my dad, my sister, and my dog, and my cat. <laughs> That's happiness to me. Like, just being in our in our company, mm. you know, and not having to worry about the outside world. Yeah. I think that's just happening happiness and just being on my own, but I think I'm I'm learning like what is true happiness. I think I'm still trying to find that. Figure that out. Figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Um brings me to my next question. Sorry. Relationships. Uh-huh. How do you do you feel there there has to be or is there a balance with owning a business and having relationships? relationships like just like friends and an actual nah, partner or just, partners oh like partners partners reason like we're just i i said this in in episode 40 uh earlier today um he has his fiance and everything he was giving us a breakdown about you know the balance uh us that were doing the podcast and same same thing mm-hmm. there has to be some sort of balance and sometimes the balance isn't always in the favor of the partner but it, and it causes issues. Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to get at is you being now a business owner, young business owner, going through everything you went through, how do we manage or what do you feel like can makes a relationship work? Well, I don't know if I could say <laughs> how does a relationship work? I just broke up with someone. <laughs> so I don't know if I could talk on that topic. Um, but something that I've learned. Or you learned, can lead us into like, all right, why is it? Like, is how you said earlier, like, there's things that could happen that lead us out. Yeah, very true. I mean, the relationship that I was in um, definitely helps me to where I'm at now. Like, you can't be, like. Salty. Salty about it. Like, you Fuck did learn. <laughs> you know, there's that side. There, and then there's yeah. like, all right, you know what? I did learn something, though. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah, like, sure. <laughs> But I did learn. I did learn. And he was a big part of like also like where I'm at. And I do recognize that. And he yeah. does too. He does too. But um, I think just you have to be sure that even the partner you're with is going to help you for the purpose and the journey where you're going. So like for me, for example, like I have a business. Right. I can't be with someone who's like, but, you know, why are you doing a business? Why don't you find a good, stable job that pays you, something like, 25 secure. something secure, $25 yeah. an hour, $30 an hour? Like, you have all, you know, why don't you do that? Like, I can't have or be with someone who's doing that or is feeding me that yeah. when I know that like I'm meant that, to have something for myself. Like someone that doesn't have their own goals and aspirations? Yeah, like, so if they don't have their own goals and aspirations, but also, like, maybe find someone that has the same taste as you. Like, it doesn't have to be the same business, but at least, like, they also want a business for themselves. Yeah. You know? And the partner that I was with, he has his own business. So, you know, in that aspect, we did help each other. Um, But I think if you ever come to the point where, like, time is asking you guys to be apart because you need to continue this journey on your own, you have to get out of your way and let those people go. So... Bringing that up, you know, um, again, the listeners that we have love everybody. Um, I think that is a good question to give to the young viewer. Mm -hmm. How do you know when it's the right time to go? When time, when life and time isn't in that favor? I think um, at least for the, like the way it, it opened up in my life was we had stopped talking and then we worked on ourselves. We came back. But then we ended up at the same scenario. It it was crazy because the same situations were happening. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was like, okay, the same the same patterns are happening from the first time we broke up and we're here again. If we can, you know, have another break, maybe a couple months and then come back. But are we going to keep going in this like like the hamster wheel? Like it's going to come back up again. So for me, it was more like if you know time is asking you to be a part, like you've already tried again and you're the same stuff is happening again. Yeah. That's how you just know, like, just let it go, you know, let it go and just don't get in your way. Uh, and that's what happened to me. And that's how I knew. Is that like your I, I keep hearing you say, is that like one of your phrases? Don't get in your own way. Yeah, it's been my new fit. Like, <laughs> let go, let God and get out of the way. Honestly, like, that's what you got to do. 
you know, is get out of your own way. Cause you know, like I know that I could, you know, you could love someone so much, but it's because you're so sure of that. You're comfortable with that. And I know that I could go back. You feel like you can love somebody for the both of them? What do you mean? Like, you know how we're talking about, and I think we've, everybody watching here, we've all gone through at one point where we know the relationship isn't working right now. And it, and it's like, we're mad at each other, um, yeah. cheating or whatever is going involved. Yet that person is losing love. Yet you're trying to love him or her for the both of you. Like I'm doing everything possible and I'm going to give myself, I'm going to lose my happiness and lose my mental health. I'm going to lose my sanity just to keep us together. And just because you can't love me at this time, I'm going to love us for the both of us. I don't believe in that. For me, I don't. (laughs) For me, it's like you have to love yourself first. Mm. And you can't, as much as I want to like, okay, you know what? I'm going to love me and I'm going to love the idea of us. I'm going to let you do what you need to do. But I'm going to hold my ground here for the both of us while you're doing what you need to do. Like, you're only hurting yourself, I think. Like, for me, I'm just not going to love the both of us because then, like, that person's not there. That's not something that's real. Yeah, we, I think we, we all at one point lose track of that, and we try to believe mm-hmm. the unbelievable, if that makes sense. Like, hey, this, we've been together for even a year or two years, and I know we're losing each other, but I know we can still work. We can still make it work. And you go through all the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And how you said, through high school and maybe a year or two after high school, you're just like, fuck, I'm going to marry this person. Mm. This is a person I'm going to enjoy everything with and I'm supposed to have everything with. Yeah. Yet those people are nowhere to be around. (laughs) Yeah. They're nowhere to be around anymore. And the growth that we have now is just like, I wouldn't be able to be this way if I didn't go through that. Through that, yeah. So with speaking on relationships and it's a good fucking topic all the time is uh I know what they feel but do you pay for a guy on do a I, first date? On a first <laughs> you? It's crazy cuz like I really don't go on dates like <laughs> I really don't like I the guy I talked to like we started off as friends and then it blossomed into something but uh, other than that like I haven't who paid really for the paid. first time. He did. <laughs> Fuck guys. <laughs> Get your money right cuz we got to does it depend on what, we said it earlier, if you take a girl out to a nice dinner, uh-huh. does that mean they you they care about you? Like, does the place determine what the relationship will be? You know what? Like, to me, what I've, what I've been feeding myself and learning is... Um, bougie places. Like, I mean, it's always nice to go to bougie places, but at the end of the day, like, no matter where we're at, we're together and you're trying to get my attention for a reason. Mm. So this is an interview. Like, I'm not concerned about what's around me. Facts. Like, why are you trying to take some time out of my time, my day? Yeah. I'm going to look at you and I'm going to interview you. Yeah. And one thing is um, that I've been, that I've learned and that I'm feeding myself and it makes sense is, you know, when you go to interviews, it could be a job interview, you know, you're not going to show up with the worst clothes or your hair not done or nothing like that, you know? presentation so why would like for example someone takes you out on a date and then they're not presentable they're not even trying in class so it's yeah t-shirt but then because we're so lonely because we really want someone to give us that opportunity like oh my god he asked me on a date like yeah we just let that fly and then we give that that person a second chance for an interview yeah so i think it's like you need to build yourself first your sureness first you know, and it's like if someone is going to take me on a date, I'm not going to be more impressed by like, well, where are we going on a date? Is it Mastro's? Is it Malibu? Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to shift my focus like, OK, he's asking me on a date. Like, what does he what does he why does he want to go on a date? Correct. Why does he want to get to know me? But like now I'm giving you my time. Let me find out if you're, you know if you qualify for a second yeah for sure because i mean even like if you're gonna go to those to those ex- not extreme but to those places obviously yeah. if you haven't been there you gotta go there anyway at yeah. one point uh, <laughs> really good food uh, small portions though for some reason these rich places give you oh, really small, small portions. portions i'm like do you see my size i gotta eat more than this. <laughs> but um it's how 
how we think and how I think if, and we said it before, if you go out to whatever place you go to, it's the conversation you have. Yeah. You know, it's the intentions that right. one has. Um, I think it's even if the guy grabs a chair and opens it for you or opens yeah, the door those or waits for you and, and doesn't leave you in the back while he's walking in the front. Yeah, because he could take you to Mashos and then be a complete... Asshole. Yeah, like a jerk, you know? <laughs> Like, yeah. what is the whole point? Like, and I think for me, it's like, you know, take me, take me on a nice date, but I can take Myself my damn to, self to a nice to date, dinner. you know, hey, yo. yeah. <laughs> like I could go there on my own. So I think it's like when you are trying to find that potential person, because we all have that person for us. Like yeah. everyone is going to have that person. Yeah. I think it's like, don't be so like awed by what's around, but like, Correct. why am I awed? in awe with the person in front but of me. It's just like how you said it right now. I don't need this person to take me because I could take myself. That, yeah. Like, I think the insecurities of someone getting awed by someone getting, going wherever, the perch, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. is like maybe I can't take myself, so I'm going to allow this person to take me. And because he's doing that, then I feel like I owe this person somebody, something. Oh. And it's like, oh, like, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, going to those places is super dope, super yeah. nice to, you know, but it's the intentions and the energy and for me honestly like i don't want to be in a position or in a place where this energy isn't reciprocated right like if i'm gonna sit with you for the next hour and a half and we're gonna eat yeah i'm gonna be myself you be yourself and i want us to have a great energy exactly and if it's just bad i mean go say you're going to the restroom and just leave <laughs> yeah just dip <laughs> just dip just, oh, i'll be right back i forgot something in the car and <laughs> I'm gone. Yeah. So I just said it earlier. Does height matter? Height matter. Well, I'm like five eight and a half with heels. I'm like six <laughs> feet. So for me, I think it does matter. Like, please God, at least let me have the height. Like, you know, <laughs> I need someone with the height because I am tall. So what's, for so me, what's the quality? So height. It has to. I mean, man, it sounds like a mandatory thing. It now. sounds like a, it has to be uh -huh. there, written. What What other two? is something that you would, like, I, I need this. This is what I want. I think um, having that partner that is also going to um, help you, build you, not degrade you. Yeah. You know? Maybe, like, we're not on the same levels, you know? Well, I mean, for me, honestly, I would want someone who, like, has a business as well. Mm. Um, someone who has their own... So needs a business in order to be to send in the resume. The for resume, you? yeah, honestly, yes. Like at least have something, you know, a business yeah. on of their own, because that's where I'm at, Correct. you know. But I think for me, it's like, does that pers that person build me? Does mm. that person help me get to that next next level? Does it help my character? You yeah. know. So do you believe in one year plan, five year plan, or a ten year plan? Um. For me, like in just anything, like career, career yourself, like so. I guess trying to lean into your business, your branding, mm -hmm. like you created this. What is the purpose, or what it? What do we look at in a year, five years? Like, is that something you look into? Something you thought about? That you talked about it with somebody? I think for me, it's more like I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I know what today can have. So today, I'm going to do the things that I can do Facts. to move forward, Correct. you know? And I think, I think for me, it's like when I did real estate, I was like, by 25, I'm going to have three investment properties. I'm going to have X amount of dollars in my bank account. And I started getting closer to 25. I had none of those. So then it was like, oh my God, like I started feeling bad. Like I'm a loser. I haven't accomplished mm -hmm. anything because I set, the things that I thought that I needed to have by the time I was 25. Yeah. So to me, it's like, at least for me, the one year, five year, three year plans doesn't work for me. Cause I don't know what my future holds. And the biggest lesson for me is this business. It came out of nowhere, you know? And so how much money have, do you have to invest in a business like yours? Um, honestly, it's just, you can get your machines and go expensive. No, no, I mean the for my classes overall it's uh twenty twenty two hundred. That's it. 
And twenty two hundred, mm. like to some, you know, it sounds like a lot, but we yeah. wait, we spend that money on things we don't need. And if you invest that twenty two hundred into yourself, just getting your machines, like I have girls that they scrapped every single dime, and now they have their own studios. They got their studios before I got my own studio, you know. And it's like, if you really want something, you're gonna make it happen. When I started this business, I had zero dollars in my bank account. I had to ask my dad to help me buy my cavitation no machine, which was like 900 bucks, I think, at the time, or 1000 So just for the machine. Jesus. You know, and I was like, I had to ask my dad. I literally went from zero money. Like, I did a whole post on my Instagram, and yeah. I put my bank statement, and it had literally zero dollars. So there's ways. If yeah. you really want to get somewhere and you really want to change your life, you're going to make it happen. No matter what, you can have zero dollars, but you're gonna make it happen. Yeah, you know for sure. So it's crazy. Now I drive a Tesla. Like, what the? F what is going on? And not one of those cheap Teslas either. <laughs> she, she didn't even drive here today. Swear to God. <laughs> my own chauffeur. My I came own with chauffeur. My own chauffeur. She fucking fell asleep behind the wheel. She said, "Let let God take the wheel." Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Let, let go, go. Let, let God. God. Yeah. You're right. Shit. Bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true when you when you really want something you're gonna make it happen you know yeah do you believe in order to be an entrepreneur you just have to have it in you already like something in you instead of like progressing and learning it i think you have to have maybe like um like there has to be something better for me let me go find out at least that but do you think that that is that's a quality that no one taught you like you yourself like you knew you had it you just was waiting for that right moment to bring it out. No, I, I don't think I knew I had that entrepreneur. I think through the situations I went through, I started realizing, like, I really do want it. Like, I'm an I entrepreneur. Want I want this. Yeah. But no, I, for me, I think it was like, I don't like people telling me what to do. I don't like, like, a, like I have to clock out to go get lunch. Like, you should be paying me to go to lunch. Like, I don't know. Like, to me, it just didn't make sense. So yeah. I think for me, it was like, I just don't like people telling me what to do. And then it it, it blossomed into, wow, I'm okay, I'm Where an entrepreneur, you, you know? Sure. And I don't even see myself like that. I think it's more just like, I know I have to provide. I know I have to get ahead. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just work and do something. Yeah, for sure. Like... And that title follows on its own. <laughs> well, I, I think now what you're doing and what you have, it's like that title is going to follow you. Mm -hmm. So do you, I think there is some sort of a target on your back now. Yeah. You know, people are watching you. I think on your IG you have 13,000. I think so, yeah. Something it's like crazy. That. I should probably pay attention to what's going on, huh? I, I mean, don't pay I, attention. <laughs> I paid attention. I was like, fuck, she got 13. <laughs> <laughs> how she get there? But it's how you said. Like, you you put in the work and the rest, the rest was follows. up to somebody else. You know what yeah. I mean? And um, first, one, I mean, to be honest, getting to the position, getting the views, getting the likes, getting the follows, it's because you are doing something correct. Right. So... Have you taken a step back and, and like really thought about like giving yourself the flowers? Like, Jesus, I created this. <laughs> I've done this. Pat on my pat on the back. I give did it myself, myself a pat on the back. <laughs> yeah, give yourself the flowers, the acknowledgement that you did do something and you are doing something that yeah. other other entrepreneurs are learning from you. You know, how you said your clients blossom and they did their own. Yeah. And in a way, I would say like you did that. Yeah. You you were part of that process. Right. Because we all look at we look at a big uh celebrities or whatever and they always talk about how somebody gave them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. They helped them out when they when they were starting. Right. And it's technically like you're that person. Helping others. <laughs> you are one of the reasons that a lot of people in that whatever in this industry that you're in, yeah, that they got what they have or they learned what they learned because you did that. Yeah. I think it's, um, I don't think I've, I need to give, like, I need to be. You're a pioneer, bro. You're yeah. a pioneer <laughs> in this shit. Like, you know, people are learning from you and taking, mm. like, notes from you, like, what you did and how you do things. And yeah. they're running with it. Yeah. So in a sense, like, you you know, giving yourself the flowers, like, you fucking did it. Yeah, I probably need to do that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave myself the car. That's what, like, okay, I'll just give myself She's that. She's like, fuck the flowers. Give me the fucking <laughs> desert. That's what I'm doing today. 
But do you think it's at one point in recommend, recommending others, like, you got to give yourself that acknowledgement? Yes, I think it is important. Celebrating your wins? Yeah. And that's what I've been um, trying to do now is, like, you got to celebrate it. You know, I think especially, like, in the culture we live, like, we're never good enough. Like, mm. I, I got this, but that person has that. I should be having what they have. Yeah. Damn. And then you don't learn to appreciate the blessing that you're in. Correct. So I think for me, it's like I've been, you know, trying to do that to myself. Yeah. Like, be proud of what's going on. Realize what's going on. The blessing that you're in. Yeah. Like, don't focus on the, oh, my God, like, I have to keep going. I, I'm not there where I'm supposed to be. But enjoy where you're at. And, and pat, like you said, pat yourself in the back and celebrate those accomplishments you know and just be happy of the things you are accomplishing the things you're learning and if things don't go the way you want them to go um there's a learning lesson in it and because of it you become stronger being present in the moment being present in the moment yeah living in the moment and being grateful for that moment <laughs> got to yeah so now 25 what you know, talking to a younger self of you, what would you tell that? What would you tell that young girl? What would I tell her, girl? Adult life <laughs> is not easy. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Amen. it is not. I would tell her, honestly, just enjoy it, learn from it, and not every experience that's, you know, that's bad, is bad. Like take from it. Learn from it and use that as a stepping stone to be a better person. Yeah. You know, and through the things that are going to happen to you, you're going to be stronger. You're going to be um, influencing and, and motivating, you know. Yeah. So even though it's going to be scary, it's going to be dark, um, you're going to pick up some stuff from there and it's going to take you to higher levels. Yeah. <laughs> and nah, honestly, like everything, you know, now going through the through this uh, podcast, and I appreciate you coming on the podcast again on a short. You know, you were in an airplane. I, know, and I hope you I did good. Through. I'm like, <laughs> no. Um, like I said, and just hearing hearing about you, you saying uh, what you just said right now, and like I said, giving you that flowers because you literally are building, giving classes to others. Like you're right. sharing the knowledge that you learned yourself. Not knowing a single thing. Yeah. Not knowing what zero dollars in the bank account. Yeah. You still flourished and you did something for yourself. Yeah. So the plan, the grit, uh, the motivation and being an inspiration to this young generation. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing here with this podcast and with these with all of our team and, and people is being those pioneers and that voice for the ones that are not confident enough to share their voice. Right. You're you're one of those. Oh, thank with you. <laughs> what you're doing, and from I honestly think thirteen thousand is gonna turn into fucking one hundred and thirteen. Yes, because, <laughs> you know you, everything you're doing, and I feel everything we all do at one point will get paid back, oh, one yeah. way or another. Yeah, one way or another, and you know this is not a spiritual channel because you know I, they say religion is not one thing to talk about. Yeah, but you gotta believe in a higher power. Yeah. You got to let go and let somebody, yeah. some power and or I, something. And I feel like, like I've been that testimony. Like I don't, you know, a lot of the things that are happening to me now, it's yeah. because of that higher power. Like people ask me, well, how'd you do it? This and that. Honestly, like it's because. Yeah. It's because. Yeah. Of the, I, there's just things. That, and I think um, if you can take away like the whole it's religion. Like, don't see it that way yeah. and just have a relationship with him. Correct. Trust me. Like it, I'm telling you the things that are happening to me now, I have not had God move so much in my life the way he's moving now. And because I welcomed him in. And I think you need that because with your own power, you, you're only going to get so far. Yeah. And I've been there with the previous two businesses. That was my power. Now this is not my power. And it's ab here. it's abundant, you know. Abundance, bro. So that's crazy. And I'm sure there's be more things that are gonna happen, but now I know that I have that backbone 
that's going to hold me up. Yeah, that backup. Mm -hmm. That backup uh, power person, whatever you want to say, that's, you know what, I'm going to help you. Yeah. That help. Yeah. So everybody has to stay tuned to. Yeah. <laughs> what's, is there something like big coming up for you or is it something planned? Another class coming up? Other, a whole different service, a whole different class. Another um, upgrade. I think there's a lot of body contour people uh -huh. out there, but there's something else bigger that we're going to be Tap able to into. provide to other people. So that's the new thing that I'm working on. <laughs> so if if you haven't became part of those 13,000, you need to go yes. and hit that follow button. You need to go subscribe to the channel. I'm sharing. Everything I have, I'm sharing so we can all level We're up. We're giving out free me. game. Exactly. <laughs> Say less. So if you haven't subscribed, like, share, shit. Episode 41 in the books. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Thank yeah. you.